Okay, so you want music to be your business? Then you gotta treat yourself like a business. Because building a solid foundation up front sets you up for success later on. Here to give us a scoop is Charlton. Hi. He's a product marketing manager here at Spotify. Whether you're an artist or a team member, you want to start treating your music like a business from day one, especially when there's potential to make money. You can start by locking down a financial plan. First, keep good records. Nah, we're talking more like this. No matter where you are in your career, documentation is key. If you buy the band lunch, snap the receipt. If you have to fix some equipment, snap a receipt. Keeping records of what you're spending helps you build a plan, and it's a lifesaver during tax season. And if you're confused about taxes and finances in general, you can always hire a business manager, AKA an accountant. The main thing is understanding the true cost of doing business and being able to anticipate the cost in the future. Singer-songwriter Nick Murphy, formerly known as Chet Faker, learned about some business costs the hard way. Here's something that I didn't know. You pay for the rider. It's not free. <laughs> so you could put all these bottles and things on the rider and like, oh, I want fruit and pink M&Ms and shit like that. That comes off your invoice, not theirs. Got it. Okay, let's talk putting your business on the books. One way to start is to set yourself up as a business entity, if and when that's the right time for you. Wait, wait, hold up. What's an entity? Kristen will know. She handles business for bands like Bad Wolves and Thunder Pussy. <laughs> it's adulting <laughs> on a grand scale. Boom. An entity is a person or a structure that houses a business, essentially. When you hear the terms LLC, corporation, partnership, those are all entities. Even you as a sole proprietor are an entity. And your options vary on a tax basis scale and where you are in the world. When set up correctly, entities can also protect you from liability. You have exposures, especially in entertainment. If you're a touring artist, you're exposed to all kinds of dangers. And you don't want to be exposed as an individual to lawsuits that come along with that. OK, so what happens next? After you've established your entity, the next thing to do is to find your operating agreement. Operating agreement, huh? It's almost like a prenup, you know? When bands break up, everybody has to take a little piece of that with them, whether it's good or bad. So what does that look like? You have to kind of define that at the beginning when everybody's getting along. And don't get it twisted. An operating agreement is a contract. No matter which path you take, the second there's a contract, you really should consider getting a lawyer involved. Spending a little bit of money on that legal advice up front can save you so much time and energy down the line. All right, so what about insurance? If you have any kind of gear or equipment, you should think about property insurance on day one. And you might think about general liability insurance, especially once you're going on tour. I was at a Girl Talk concert once, and somehow a girl ended up, like, under the stage. But don't worry, no one was harmed. That's something you obviously have no control over while you're performing, but you might be responsible for it legally. Ouch. Oh, and another thing, understand your rights. Not just your copyrights, but protections you might need for trademarks, too. The best thing about taking care of business is what it allows you to do. Setting up that foundation from the jump allows you to look ahead to your next opportunity. It lets you take risks, and it's going to help your career grow in all the ways that you want it to. Word. Anything else? Let's definitely cut the part where I say I was at a Girl Talk concert. <laughs> <laughs> or make sure to clarify that I was in college. You got it, Charlton. That's business for you. Check you later. <laughs>